Hey everybody, John from IPT. Um, we worked on this trans in a previous video and I said I'm going to leave it at that, but I changed my mind. I'm going to finish this up for you guys. There's not much left, um, but I just want to show you how to put the peripheral stuff on, put the valve body in, etc. So let's go for it. All right, we're going to start with the, um, I guess the factory level, they call it a kick down switch. So this is just a switch and it opens and closes. But who cares? Why do we need to know that? Well, on every shift in this transmission, the band's either on or off, right? It's off in first gear. It comes on in second gear. Back off in third gear. Back on in fourth gear. So the computer wants this information to know when a shift occurs. Kind of uh, archaic, but this thing was, you know, well ahead of its time as far as electrical systems and um, all the electronic controls. You know, there's better ways to do the stuff now, but this design is from like 1985, so it's uh, it was pretty innovative. Okay, so that's in. Now, let me actually turn this back around. You can kind of air check this to see if it's going to leak, right, this seal here. And I'm going to go over the air checks again because it's, it's important. So first we have servo apply. And we can see what I was talking about before. If you look at the pin, you can see how far it's traveled. So you want between an eighth or between a sixteenth and an eighth of servo travel. So servo release. And when something backs up like that and the air shoots out, that, that's a good sign. You have no leakage. Next is the end clutch. And you can't really check this till the transmission's together. A lot of people try and check it. It's, it's pissing air all over the place. But that's because the input shaft isn't in it. Right? So the back of that drum has to um, seal on the input shaft. And that's like 100% too. Low reverse. Okay, now I'm not sure which one is the front clutch and which one is the rear clutch, but obviously they both need to apply. And that's not quite as solid because you have ceiling rings involved, but it's certainly a good air check. And this hole is not going to do anything. It just um, comes out through the end of your input shaft for um, converter clutch application. So now we're going to put the valve body down. But before we do, there's a few things to be aware of. I like to have this all the way in this position as far out as possible. We have a seal here and that feeds your low reverse clutch. So if you don't have that in there, you're going to either have no reverse at all or you're going to have partial reverse. It's going to burn it out. And also you want to make sure that the sleeve is in place. This sleeve engages into this hole to apply your end clutches. So the thing that people make mistakes on, and um, please don't do this because there's like <laughs> almost none left in the world. They don't have this thing, the manual valve, engaged properly, and they try and crank this valve body down, and they break the valve. And um, they're real hard to get. So the first thing we want to do is get our wiring harness and send it through the case. And sometimes these tabs break that hold it in. So what you want to do is get it all nice and clean and you can put a blob of silicone on there and kind of glue it in. I'm just going to put it in loose for now. And this is the important part. Can you maybe come from this side, Ken? Please. Let's see down in here. This valve has to engage into that pin. So you don't want it turned like that. It's got to face down.
and I'm giving it that little tap because that's this oil delivery sleeve going into the case to feed the end clutch. So now we just have um, three different size bolts. We have a short one, a long one, and the rest are medium size. And we have a couple other things that we need to put in here too. We have a bracket that holds the wiring out of the way. Been a while. <laughs> and this is another thing that's important if you're um, building one of these. I'm not exactly sure what this is for this little 10 millimeter here, but it's a pressure takeoff. So presumably on the assembly line, they use it to check pressure and there's a little O-ring on there. And that O-ring, you know, through years and heat cycles, etc., gets really flat. So um, I like to take that out and change the little O-ring on there. And if you take them apart, you're gonna see it's like a piece of uncooked linguine. It gets super hard. Also, we got a temperature sensor that needs to come in here, and I probably should have put this in first, but I'll get it. All right, that goes through here, and we get a lot of questions on how this goes. So if you look, there's a little tab here, and that tab should engage into that hole. I know you got a lot of you guys are using shift boxes and stuff like that. So um, some of these electronics become unnecessary. But it's nice to put them all in. And I torque these to 80 inch pounds. All right, so these are the things we're looking for once we have this down. We want to make sure this valve turns freely and that it's engaged in here. I don't have a shifter on this, so I'll try and do it by hand. But if you move this assembly down here, you want to see the valve moving. Um, as far as filters, there's a debate, let's say, as to which filter to use. And uh, my opinion differs from a, a lot of what I see. I like this style filter. And the reason is, is because the pickup is at the very back. So on a hard launch, your fluid's all trying to walk away from, from the other side of the filter. So, you, you know, under a hard acceleration and a hard launch, I'd way rather see that be towards the back. But again, different people have different... Um, ideas and, and theories about it, but this is what we use. And this is another um, area where people could get into trouble. If you tighten these bolts down too much, you could stick the TCC valve and it's going to cause issues like it could melt the transmission. So I torque these to 60 inch pounds. And I go over them a couple times. 
let that cork gasket compress a little bit. So you can check it this way. I'm sorry, this way. There's a little hole you could get in. I don't know if you could see this. Once you have that tightened down, you can move that valve. Right, because sometimes if this gets tightened down too much or, or improperly, this valve is going to get stuck. All right, so now that that's all in place, do the old stud thing here. And as you guys probably know, <laughs> these pans are often in, in, in bad shape. But I used to do a lot of um, buying new ones from the dealer, so everything was nice and pretty when I did somebody's trans and sent it back. But uh, like many things, they got impossible to get. All right, so we're going to put the pan on, and I think um, I don't need to bore you guys with that. That's pretty self-explanatory. So let me do this, then we'll move on to the rest. So on a 1G, you have a cork gasket, and on a 2G, you have like this captured O-ring, which in my opinion, is probably a lot better. And it's nice to have this structural cover as opposed to that tin pan. And if you're working on stuff, make yourself some studs. You need a, a 6 by 1.0 and a, what would it be, an uh, 8 by 1.25, I believe. I don't know, but pump bolt size and um, hand bolt size. You know, if you're doing a lot of transmissions, you're going to be using stuff like that all the time. All right, I had a little complication here. Um, most people that have filmed uh, <laughs> with their phone or with anything, anything else, they um, sometimes discover their video isn't there. So <laughs> I did a couple more things that weren't caught on camera. And I'm kind of going to be lazy here. I put the side cover on, which is pretty self-explanatory. Put the mount brackets on. But I wanted to go into a couple things with you guys. Uh, particularly on the pulse generators. First of all, a lot of people struggle with this. The easy way to get these off of here is you could just stick a pick in here and whoop, they come right off. But otherwise you're gonna, you know, you're gonna be fighting with the thing. Now the next thing is you have two pulse generators. They both have green wires. If you can see, this one has a black tracer on it. As well as the black tracer, it's got a black casing. So I always remember this by the phrase black top. Black goes on the top. The other connector is clear and it's got two green wires without tracers. And they get routed like this. I don't know if you could show the whole routing scheme here. Down, up, through here, and back down. So let me uh, rewind in time here and, and uh, tell you guys a couple things to be aware of. If you put these pulse generators in wrong, what it's going to do is probably try and make one upshift and then it's going to immediately go into limp mode. So the other thing you need to worry about is um, these connectors. I'll take this out again. If you see these connectors, they're the same. All right, you could plug them in wrong and that's going to give you limp mode and also your mass air has got this same plug right so that could get plugged into the transmission 
And then, you know, usually if you do that, the thing's not going to start up. But I'll rewind to uh, the mid-90s, my first day at a new job. Back then, one of the questions was, can you do KMs? Like these things used to be called KMs because that was the um, generic naturally aspirated deal. And if you said, yeah, they'd probably give you a job because nobody wanted to mess with these things back then. So my younger 25-year-old self or so, they said, we got a car here that um, it's in limp mode and we can't fix it. So it took me about two weeks and I finally figured out that whoever had worked on the thing plugged this thing in wrong. And I still like get this phone call once in a while now. So it, it's a pretty easy problem to solve now once you've seen it, you know the answer. But maybe mark these connectors when you take them apart or, or watch what you're doing because that's definitely going to ruin your day if you plug it in wrong. And the last thing is your rain switch or manual lever position sensor. I don't have a shift arm here, but if the shift arm goes on here, there's a hole in the shift arm and there's a hole here. And the adjustment is you put a drill bit in there in neutral and get everything lined up and then crank it down. We don't have the shift arm. So to get this adjusted, we're going to look at these witness marks. You can see where the bolt was already riding. And we're going to try and bring the bolts down pretty exactly to that. And, you know, that will be fine as far as adjustment. Other than that, I guess I'll just mention your output shaft for the uh, T-case. Be real careful with these splines. They kind of wear out. This looks funny, but it's normal. That's just the way it's made. But if the splines themselves look, you know, beat like that, change it. Um, these things rust to death, so that's another thing to be careful of. You know, sometimes even anti-seize on here is not a bad idea, but it seems like these things are mostly race cars now, and they just kind of don't get that old and that kind of crud and, and, you know, I guess usage wear on it. But it's, it's something to be aware of, especially if you're taking apart one that, that nobody's messed with. A lot of times these shafts are bad. And like everything else, these things are um, getting real difficult to get parts for. So if I had one of these cars, I would probably recommend getting a couple transmission cores because there's going to be a, a time very soon where you can't get any parts. All right, forgive me. There's one other thing I want to touch on. Um, a lot of you guys are using a 2G trans with the with your six bolt engine. And you have the Kigley kit, which spaces everything further away. So what happens is sometimes this axle with the stub shaft rather kind of comes off the seal where it's supposed to be sealing because you've moved it out a little bit. And what happens is going to leak on you. So what we do in that situation is I made this out of some ex existing parts, but it's um, basically it's two washers and a seal, right? So you can see this is approximately the thickness of the Kigley kit. So what we do, if somebody's using a Kigley kit, we put the seal in, we sell a kit to do this, but it's, this and then you you know you drive the seal in and that's going to position it uh, on the axle stub shaft to where it's not going to leak on you please like share subscribe and hit the notification bell